Hey everyone, I'm Clara, physical therapist and founder of Good Day Pilates. This is Trainer of the Month Club with Well or Good. Today we're going to be doing a full body Pilates workout. Let's get started. So we're going to begin laying down on our backs. And these can be bent feet flat, about hip width distance apart. And then just go ahead and rest your hands on your belly. Maybe you close your eyes here. We're going to take a couple of breaths just to ground ourselves. So once you're there, just take a big inhale. You're going to feel your belly rise up underneath your hands. Your ribs will expand into the mat beneath you. And then as you exhale, just gently think about pulling your belly button down towards your spine. You'll feel your front ribs close and your deep core muscles engage. Just one more breath like that. Inhale, feeling the belly rise, the ribs expand. And then exhale, gently pull belly button to spine and close those front ribs. We wanna try and maintain that core connection now as we start moving. So from here, we're gonna float both arms to the sky and float both legs to a tabletop position. So your knees are right on top of your hips. Let's take our right arm and our left leg. Let's reach them back away from one another. And then nice and slowly draw them back to center. Opposite side, left arm, right leg, reach away and then slowly draw them back to center. We're just gonna continue alternating side to side. Of course, the further away your arm and your leg reach, the more of a challenge this is gonna be. So you can challenge yourself as much as you need with that range of motion. I want you to feel as your arm and your leg reach, we have to recruit a little deeper through those core muscles to stabilize. So feel that wrapping in of your waistline, that pulling down of your belly button. And this is our deep core, our transversus abdominis and our pelvic floor, and they help stabilize us through all of our movement. We're just gonna go for another four here. And I don't really mind how you're breathing as long as you are in fact breathing, very important. One more each side. And then if this feels good for you, you're welcome to stick with it. Otherwise, we're going to go for double arm, double leg. So both arms, both legs will reach away and then just draw them back to center. Keep that going. Lengthen the arms and the legs away, and then slowly draw them back to center. We'll just take five more. Now, of course, two arms, two legs are much heavier than one arm, one leg. So we need a little more work through the core here. Let's go for three. Keep thinking belly button to spine, especially as you reach. And then just one more. And you can just hug your knees to your chest for a moment. Let your spine relax. Feet are gonna come back to the floor, hip width apart. And this time we're gonna take our hands and clasp them behind our head. Elbows will wrap forward just slightly so you can see them. Now we curl the head and shoulders up off the ground, thinking ribs sliding towards your hips, and then slowly lower your head back down. We continue just like that, curling the head and shoulders up, and then slowly lowering back down. So to start with, we wanna keep our tailbone nice and heavy. We should be in a neutral spine, neutral pelvis, so you wanna have just a little space underneath the low back here. Just enough so like a little ladybug could crawl under there and you wouldn't squish it. As we curl up, we're really recruiting those upper abdominals as we pull our rib cage down, keeping the head supported in the hands. So we're trying not to use our neck muscles here. We'll just take three more curls. Now again, as I start to add on bits and pieces, know that you can always stick with this variation. Otherwise, the next time you curl up, we're gonna stay up there. Can you float your right leg up to tabletop and then bring your left leg up to meet it? Keep your legs still, we go back to the curls. You'll lower your head down and then you'll curl your head and shoulders up. Continuing here, still working through those upper abs. And now we're feeling a little more work through our low abs here, holding up the legs. And then we just keep this going another five. Again, you're welcome to pop those feet down at any time. For four, head stays heavy in the hands. Three. Last two. Okay, the next time we curl up, we're gonna hold it up at the top. Just your right leg will extend forward on like a 45 degree angle. Drag it back to tabletop. Left leg, reach it long. And then drag it back to tabletop. We keep alternating here, one leg at a time. 
And because we're in this curl, you have a lovely bird's eye view of what your pelvis is doing in space. So as one leg goes forward, let's make sure the pelvis doesn't dip towards that side. Good, we'll go for two more each side. Again, the lower your leg, the more of a challenge this will be. One more each side. Now adding on again, as your right leg reaches forward, can you rotate towards the left? Bring it all back to center and then swap. Left leg forward, we twist right. Coming back to center and then we keep alternating side to side. So going for like a bicycle crunch here. You're twisting towards the leg that's staying still. Continuing nice and slow. So now we have our upper abs keeping us in the curl. Our lower abs controlling the legs. And now layering in these obliques as we start to twist. Now keep going like this, or we can start to speed it up. So as we make things a little more dynamic, can you keep that pelvis really still? Let's go for five, four, three, two, one. Whew, let it go, take a breather. Maybe hug your knees to your chest. Maybe a little rock side to side. Awesome job. Let's extend both legs forward long on the mat in front of us. Both arms now are gonna reach up towards the sky. Let's see if we can roll up to a seat. So we're gonna tuck the chin, reach the arms forward, and see if you can sit all the way up. If you need to use your hands, use your hands. Totally fine. Once you're there, bend your knees so your feet are flat on the ground. Again, about hip width apart. And then let's reach those arms forward. See if you can lengthen your spine here so you're right at the very front of your sit bones. And then we're gonna scoop the belly and just begin to roll back about halfway. Once you get there, pause. Still thinking belly to spine and like you're trying to hollow out the front of your body. And then we reach forward to round all the way back up to a tall seat. Inhaling when you get to the top and then we go again. Scoop the belly, you roll it back just about halfway. A little pause there, let's think wide collarbones. And then again, we reach forward to sit all the way up. So let's continue like this. Scoop the belly, tuck the tail, roll it back and then slowly roll it up. Good. And then as you keep going, if those hip flexors start to get a little grippy, try squeezing your legs together first. Sometimes when we have those inner thighs engaged, the hip flexors can just like switch off a little. If it's still feeling too much, you're welcome to extend both of your legs and keep going like that. We'll take just three more. Last two. All right, the next time we roll back, we're gonna hold it there. I'm gonna take a tiny pulse, back one inch and up one inch. Just keep going like that little pulse. And I want you to imagine like you're folding over those front bottom ribs. So we're getting deeper in the curl each time we pulse. Six more. And we should be starting to feel like a little quiver through those abs now. If you're not, maybe scoop back a little more for three for two, last one, hold it back there. Your right arm is gonna reach up towards the sky and then slowly lower it back to chest height. Left arm, reach it up and then slowly lower down. Keep alternating. Now again, as we lift one arm, we're just loading up through those core muscles. So you feel that they have to work a little harder as the arm floats. Let's just take another five. Can you keep that chin tucked so the neck stays nice and relaxed? Feet stay heavy on the mat in front of you. One more each arm. And then you're welcome to stay here or we're gonna go for double arms. So both arms will float and then lower. Keep thinking belly to spine as those arms lift. And of course, the higher your arms go, the more of a challenge this will be. So go as far as you can. Feeling all the work in your core, nothing in your back or your neck. Just for three. Last two. Last one. And then reach forward to sit all the way up. Take a little fold over your legs just for a moment. We've got one more round. So sitting back up nice and tall, feet flat on the ground, still hip width apart. And let's bring our hands to prayer at the center of our chest. We're gonna scoop the belly, roll back halfway again and hold it. And this time we go for rotation. So let's twist towards the right, 
slowly bring it back to center and then twist toward the left. Slowly bring it back to center and we keep alternating here side to side. And we're thinking about those oblique muscles working to wrap the ribs around the spine, but the low abdominal is working to keep the pelvis nice and still. So it's all about going for pelvic stability and then upper body mobility. And most of the things we do in everyday life promote the opposite of that, right? Sitting at your desk, sitting at your computer, carrying a backpack. We'll just take three more. Keeping those hands in line with the middle of your chest. And then you're gonna meet me twisted to the right and we'll hold it, take a little pulse to the right. So I always think like you're trying to squeeze the last bit of water out of a wet towel. Let's go for five, four, three, two, straight to the other side, over to the left we hold and then pulse. Good. Keeping that opposite hip heavy. Five, four, three, two, come back to center. You can reach the arms forward to help you sit all the way up. Again, take a quick little fold over those legs, maybe let the head go. Good, and then sitting all the way back up, feet come back to flat on the ground, hands are gonna reach behind you, fingertips point towards you. Now let's press into the feet, press into the hands, and start to lift the hips up into like a reverse tabletop here. Keeping the chin tucked so the back of the neck is long, and then just lower your hips about 90% of the way down. Press into the feet, drive those hips up, finding that reverse tabletop, and then lower the hips almost all the way down. Keep going like this. So now starting to wake up the back of the body. We did a lot of curls, a lot of rollbacks, so all for the front body. Now thinking more about waking up the glutes, the hamstrings, and the shoulder blades. So that posterior chain, really driving down into the feet as those hips lift. And we'll just take another five here. You wanna think collarbones nice and wide. Just for two. Now on our last one, we're gonna lower about three quarters of the way down and hold it there. Start to bend your elbows and tap your butt to the floor and then press back up. It's a tricep dip. Lower down, little tap, and then press back up. So we're still thinking wide collarbones. We want the elbows pointing straight back. And we should be feeling this in the back of the arms and the back of the shoulder blades. Let's just take another five. These kept pretty tough, pretty quick. Four, three, two. Now we're gonna go halfway down and hold, take a little pulse for 10. Nine, eight, keep hugging the elbows towards one another. Five, four, three, two. You can sit all the way down on one. Great job, maybe give your wrists a little shake. We're gonna roll over to hands and knees. So you can just cross at the shins, rolling over, finding hands and knees. Your wrists will be under your shoulders and your knees will be under your hips. We'll take a few cat cows just to reset here. So we're gonna drop the belly, lift the chest, take a big breath in, and then press into your hands, scoop the belly round the spine. Really let the head go. One more each way like that. Arching the spine, think about opening the chest and then really pushing down and rounding, finding space between the shoulder blades. Let's return back to just a neutral spine position and we're gonna to lower to our forearms here. So elbows underneath shoulders. Your forearms will make the number 11. Your right leg is gonna to reach to the back of the mat so your toes are just tapped on the floor behind you. We're gonna float that right heel up to hip height and then just slowly lower it back down to tap the floor. Keep going, right leg floats up and then we lower it down to tap. We'll just continue like this. Now as that leg floats up, keeping it really long, really straight. So we're reaching back through that right heel. We wanna keep our pelvis really still. So making sure that that right hip hasn't opened. I like to think about my right pinky toe facing the floor. And then of course we want belly button hugging to spine, especially as the leg lifts so that we can keep our lower back supported. And then think about pushing the forearms down a little so the space between the shoulder blades lifts. So we've got some strength and stability from the shoulders. 
just for three more here. We want to start to feel the back of the right leg working. Okay, now we hold that right leg at hip height. Start to draw little circles around with that leg. Tiny little circles. You want to think about that thigh bone just rolling around in the hip socket. Again, your pelvis is staying really still. You should be starting to feel that right low glute and hamstring working. So back of the right leg. Let's go for three more in this direction. Probably just the size of like a tennis ball with those circles, they don't have to be huge. And then let's go the other way, start to reverse. Keep pressing those forearms down so we're not losing the stability through those shoulders. Good, let's go for five. Four, three, two. Now we're gonna hold that leg up at hip height. We're gonna tap the foot to the outside of the mat on the right and then sweep it up and over to the left. Keep that going, up and over to the right and then up and over to the left. So we're drawing like a giant rainbow with that right leg. Now here your hips can move a little, that's okay. We'll start to feel not only that right leg working, but the left glute stabilizing a little too, and also those obliques that we warmed up earlier. Let's just take another four, so two more each way. Three, two, last one, and then bring it back to center, tiny pulse up with the leg. We just got 10, nine, for that little squeeze around the smile line of your right butt cheek. Five more. Four, three, two. Now last one, tap the right toes to the floor. Step the left foot back to meet the right. We're in a plank. Keep pressing the floor away with those forearms. Think about opening the chest slightly forward and lifting the back of the knees to the sky. We're gonna hold and breathe for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, nearly there, four, three, two, and then lower your knees to the floor. You can take a quick child's pose. Think knees wide, feet together, hips to heels, and stretch those arms forward. Just one breath. Now we're gonna bring ourselves up to a high kneel position, facing towards the long edge of your mat. That same right leg we just worked is gonna step out to the right. Hands are gonna come across your chest here. Left knee should be just underneath your left hip. We start to side bend to the left. So a little lean up and over to the left, really press into the outer edge of that right foot and then bring yourself all the way back up. Keep it going. Side bend up and over to the left and then bring it all the way up. So again, we're working through these right obliques. We wanna think about going for length rather than depth as you lean over here. And imagine you're like wedged between two walls. So we're really just side bending. There's no leaning forward or back and there's no twisting. Let's go for three. Let's go for two. And then we'll lean over and we'll just hold it there. I'm gonna take a little pulse up and down. For 10, nine, really press into the outer edge of that right foot. Seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and then last one. You can take that left hand to the floor and maybe just a big reach of that right arm overhead. One breath here. And bring it all the way up and we're gonna do the second side. So coming to hands and knees, we'll drop back down onto our forearms so your elbows are underneath your shoulders and then that left leg will extend back behind you. From here, we'll float that left heel up to hip height and then lower the foot to tap the floor. Floating that leg up and then lowering the foot to tap. So again, we're thinking length through that left leg. It's like you're really reaching back through that heel as the leg floats up, pulling that belly button to the spine just a little bit more. And feel that little squeeze around the smile line of your left butt cheek. And don't forget about the stability through your shoulders. So really press the forearms down lifting the space between the shoulder blades up. Now, because we've already worked that right side, that right glute will probably be active and helping you stabilize a little bit more here. So you might even feel both legs. 
And let's go for five. Keeping that left pinky toe facing the floor. Three. Two. Now we'll hold that leg up at hip height. Start to draw little circles with the leg. Again, these circles are coming from the very top of that thigh bone, so the hip joint. We don't want to see any floppy knees, any floppy ankles. Four more. And then you can just reverse, go the other way. And go for five, four, three, two. Now holding that leg at hip height, we're gonna tap it to the outside of the mat on the left, and then we swing it up and over to the outside of the mat on the right. So we're going for those big rainbows, up and over, and up and over. We can get like a little swivel through the pelvis here. You should start to feel obviously both glutes working, but now a little bit through the obliques, so the sides of your waist. We'll go for six, five, four, three, two. Last one, just bring it back to centre, lengthen it, and then a little pulse up for ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Tap the toes to the ground. Right foot steps back to meet your left. We're in our plank again. We're going to hold and breathe. Ten seconds. Lengthen the spine forward. Lift the back of the knees to the sky for five, four, three, two. You can drop your knees. Send your hips back to a child's pose. One breath. Okay, coming back up to that high kneel position, facing the long edge of your mat. Now that left leg will extend out to the side, outer edge of the foot grounded to the floor, and hands can come back across your chest. So we're going up and over to the right, and then using those left obliques to pull you back to centre. Keep going. We want to think length through the crown of your head, and those oblique muscles are working on the way down and on the way up. Let's just take another four. Last three. Last two. And then we're going to hold it for the pulse. Tiny pulse up and down. We've just got ten. Nine. Eight. Good. Six more. Five. Four. Three. Two, right hand can go down, and then just a little stretch or reach of that left arm overhead. Enjoy that through that whole left side body. And then coming all the way up, you're going to meet me in a high plank position. So spinning back to hands and knees, we'll step the feet back one at a time to a high plank. Good. Again, really press the floor away, lengthen the spine forward, take an inhale. We're going to downward dog, so hips will lift up and back. You can let the heels melt to the floor. I like to keep a little bend in the knees and think about really flaring the sit bones to the sky. That way you're going to get a true hamstring stretch. Take one breath in and then start to walk your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet. You'll meet me in a forward fold at the centre of your mat. Again, soften your knees. You can let your head go for a moment. We're going to roll up to standing one bone at a time. Once you get to the top, just a little roll up, back and down with those shoulders. And then again, we're turning to face the long edge of your mat. We're going to step our feet nice and wide. Toes and knees will turn out and hands can start on your hips. We're going to lower the tailbone straight down towards the floor, finding a sumo squat and then pressing into the feet as you stand. Keep it going. Tailbone goes straight down and then pushing into the feet as you stand. So you almost want to feel like you're sliding down a wall. Think about the knees wrapping back and the inner thighs wrapping forward. Let's just take another six here and then we hold it down there. I'm going to feel those same side glute muscles we just warmed up and now also a little bit of those inner thighs. Four more. Last three. Last two. 
Now we hold it down on this last one. For an extra challenge, let's take hands behind head, elbows wide, right heel is gonna lift off the ground, and then lower it down. And then your left heel, we peel it up, and then lower it down. So keep pressing your head back into your hands. Elbows super wide, that's gonna help with your posture. As the heel lifts, try not to let your tail lift. So we're gonna stay nice and low, four more. Last three. Now you can always stick with this, or we're gonna go for both heels at once. Let's go, lift the heels, lower the heels. Just seven more. Really pressing into the big toe ball mounds. That's gonna help fire up the whole inner seam of the leg. Last three, last two, last one, and then you can stand all the way up. Let's stand at the back of our mat. Nice and slow, we're gonna tuck the chin and roll all the way down. Once you're there, we're going to walk out to a high plank, our last bit of hard work here. Pressing the floor away, reaching the chest forward. Let's bring left knee to chest, step it back to plank. Right knee to chest, step it back to plank. Keep going slowly here. See if you can keep that pelvis nice and still. Let's take four, three. Now again, you can stick with this, or if you wanna come with me, let's speed it up. So we go a little faster, maybe even turning it into a jog, five, Four, three, two, last one, hold the plank, and then drop the knees wide, sit back to a child's pose. Big breath in, and big breath out. Nice and slowly walk your hands back towards your knees, just sitting onto your heels, and that was a full body Pilates workout. Again, my name's Clara, founder of Good Day Pilates. If you want more workouts like that, subscribe to Well and Good.